peers and the reaction of the community that follows. With me this morning is Daniel Belinsky, the founder of Canticle Productions, which has produced this movie. Thanks for joining me this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. It, uh, it made its premiere in Watford City mm -hmm. last week, I believe, and mm -hmm. you said sold out uh, there. A lot yeah. of it was shot in Watford City. Right. We're going to get into some of the specifics, Daniel, but tell me a little bit about as much as you want to give away about this movie. Sure. Um, so the story-wise, it's about uh, a family that disappears from their farm in uh, 1931 in Mackenzie County, North Dakota. Um, and their farmhand claims that they've moved to Oregon, as a lot of families did at the beginning of the Great right. Depression. Um, but the sheriff doesn't believe him, and the rest of the town doesn't believe the farmhand either. And so the sheriff has to investigate the disappearance of this family uh, while at the same time holding the town at bay because they're furious and they want to take justice into their own hands. Um, so it's this fascinating true story it really happened in McKenzie County. A lot of the people up in McKenzie County have an actual personal connection. So their grandparents or their great grandparents were involved with the events of that, you know, of that episode. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's an honor and it's a pleasure to tell uh, a true story like that that so many people are invested in. You know, and if you go online, just all you have to do is Google End of the Rope, and you're, you'll find the trailer, you'll find some information about the movie. And I think it's important, and you did point this out, Dan, that it is a true story. It is mm -hmm. something that, uh, you know, I've lived here a long time. I had never heard about this incident. And uh, Schaefer is where this happened, Schaefer, North Dakota. Tell us where mm -hmm. that's located, because probably, like I, I wasn't sure where that was located at. Sure. Schaefer is a ghost town at this point. Yeah. It's just a bunch of depressions in the ground. Yeah. It's right outside of Watford City. The only only building that's left standing is owned by a family, uh, the Hartle family up there, and it's the jail cell, the actual okay. jail cell wow. where Charles Bannon, the farmhand, was held when, I don't want to give a spoiler, but the mob came for him. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and um, that jail, um, the, the period structure, um, it was used as a granary for many, many years, but then uh, we, there was a welder up there who reinstalled uh, cell bars there and we put a new front door in it and we ended up filming in the actual jail cell. Okay. You're from Wisconsin originally and we're mm -hmm. seeing some of the images here on, on, uh, on the screen. You're from Wisconsin originally but uh, there's something about making movies in North Dakota that has really captured your attention. What is it? Yeah, well, this is our third feature film now mm -hmm. and we've got a whole bunch of films in the pipeline now. I just find uh, the more I learn of North Dakota history, the more excited I am to tell the stories. Uh, there's just some very beautiful and powerful stories here um, and, and stories that showcase themes that are important to me and my company mm -hmm. too, you know, themes of, of sacrifice and love and perseverance and, and courage. I think, you know, those, uh, North, the history of North Dakota, you know, between the homesteading uh, that happened there um, and then, you know, all the way up to the present day, it's a relatively short history exactly. you know, of the, of the yeah. state, at least with, when the white men came. And, um, it, it's just full of um, full of uh, very brave people making a new home, and so I find that inspiring. Did you do the research personally? Who helped you research this thing to to, to be as accurate as it is? So I wrote the movie with the director Charlie Grier, who's out of Minneapolis, but it was based on a book that was written by the late Dennis Edward Johnson from Watford City. He was a historian and lawyer up there. Um, and so he had done a tremendous amount sure. of research into the story, um, and he was at our side at, throughout the writing process, giving his legal and historical input. Um, so he, 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 was, he was definitely holding our hand through the process in a great way. Okay, time is going to fly here, and I want to get to. I want to make sure that we can tell people where they can catch this movie. But when you start, when you start with a, a film like this. Do you have actors in mind that you think, or actresses that you think would play the particular roles in general? Do you open it wide open to auditions? How do you go finding the people that are actually going to carry the movie? Yeah, for both cast and crew, uh, there's some key people that I've worked with before that you always want to bring back to be sure. part of the team. Um, but uh, apart from that, you know, for actors specifically, we hired a casting director and okay. we did a nationwide casting search for our leads. We also did casting calls here in Bismarck and also in Watford City for all supporting roles and extras. So there were a lot of North Dakotans involved in the production. Okay, let's talk about the red carpet premieres that are coming up here. And over the weekend, you're going to be on Friday night. It's going to premiere in Fargo on Saturday mm -hmm. night in Grand Forks. It's coming to Bismarck and other communities. So mm -hmm. walk us through that and what that's all about. 
Sure, well the idea is to give a behind the scenes look into the making of the movie. So we have a red carpet affair mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, we'll have merchandise that's out from the, uh, from the filming, props and costumes and set sure. pieces and things like that. And also cast and crew available there for a Q&A afterwards and to meet and greet uh, with people so that people can get uh, a real taste of what it's like to make a North Dakota movie here in North Dakota. All right, what's next? This one debuts. I know you're always busy. You're working on something. What's the next project? Sure, we're working on a film about the Marquis de Mores and the founding of Medora. Also a movie about Hazel Minor, the 15-year-old farm girl who right. gave her life, saving her little brother and sister in the snowstorm in 1920. That is, uh, that is a story of legend, and it deserves to be uh, reintroduced to the generations that have lost track and don't know who Hazel Minor is. Absolutely. Same, same thing with Medora. Daniel, thank you so much. Okay. I appreciate your time, and I know this is a busy time for you, but you know, again, all I've seen is the trailer, but it's very intriguing, and it looks like a great movie. What's the total running time on it? Two hours and 15 minutes. Okay, so it's a, it's a film that's gonna capture your attention, edge of the seat type thing, right? <laughs> right, that's right. All right, right. Daniel, thank you so much. Thank appreciate you, your time. Appreciate it. We're taking a break. We'll be back. We've got much more coming up on North Dakota Today, right after this.